So uh, I'm going to move on to part two um, of the lecture this week and think together uh, with you about who is the teacher researcher. Um, so thinking of ourselves as teachers and researchers requires us to situate ourselves in between the role of leading and following children. Um, we bring with us our histories, tensions, artistic passions, and wonderings into moment of inquiry uh, with children, actively listening to children, materials, and place, nourishing a sustained attention to how we affect and are affected by others through our methodologies of research and pedagogy. So we're lingering and we're listening, um, and this requires a particular kind of vulnerability, an openness across difference, across layers of the past, present, and future, and staying with the frictions and difficulties that these overlappings might provoke. Um, so in attuning to the rhythms of these lived moments of inquiry, and enhancing their qualities, their aesthetic qualities, uh, we might provoke children's emerging theories about what something is and what it might become. Um, so thinking with the role of the educator within the BC Early Learning Framework, we're considering ourselves as co-composers of knowledge with children um, and thinking of knowledge as something that's always becoming, something beyond what we already know. So as educators, research is a vital process that stimulates and sustains our pedagogical trajectories with children as something that's meaningful. Um, so in this way, our pedagogies are enacted with an attentiveness to question, a search and a research for meaning in a lived experience. Um, and as Van Manen writes, this is a fundamentally pedagogic orientation. Um, pedagogy requires a phenomenological sensitivity to lived experience or children's realities and life worlds. Pedagogy requires a hermeneutic ability to make interpretive sense of the phenomena of the life world in order to see a pedagogical significance of situations and relations of living with children. And pedagogy requires a way with language in order to allow the research process of textual reflection um, to contribute to one's pedagogic thoughtfulness and act. So in this sense, we need to be uh, sensitive to the lived experience, to have the ability to interpret it um, beyond what we already know, and also to have the skill of language, be it through photography, of course, of writing, videography, um, to make these processes and to make these interpretations visible um, with thoughtfulness and with tact so that we can share it with others. So at the beginning of the course, we ask questions, what is research and how can research be imagined? Um, how do we come to know and understand the world around us? So we've discussed uh, the, the colonial histories of research, um, that this work is non-neutral, um, that research in many ways can carry with it a violence. And research often holds particular practices that over time become so normalized that they're invisible and their meaning goes unnoticed. Um, and as we've considered um, these colonial tensions, we can also consider what becomes possible or impossible when research is conceived as a productive device in the service of a particular, particular rationality, of a particular objective uh, orientation to the world as if we're separate from it and we're not implicated in its ongoing processes. Um, and so then what happens when educators become researchers, when educators are not thinking of curriculum as something that is outside of or above being implemented down to children, but rather if curriculum is made through research questions and through ongoing inquiries with children that matter because of our lived experience in the places that we're situated. So thinking artfully and paying attention to these practices, what they do, and how they might be rethought. So as teachers and researchers, um, there are particular dispositions that enable these kinds of inquiries to emerge. What does research make possible? What are its effects? Uh, who and what is it accountable to? How is it consequential? What kinds of relationships does it evoke? 
Um, and what does it do to pedagogy? How can research be an ongoing aspect of one's teaching practice? What matters? What orientations are necessary in thinking uh, beyond an existing uh, idea? And what skills or dispositions are necessary for the teacher researcher? So Bell Hook writes that engaged pedagogy does not seek, seek to simply empower students. Any classroom that employs a holistic model of learning will also be a place where teachers grow and are empowered by the process. Um, and so I'm curious about what changes you might have noticed throughout this course in yourselves as educators, not only in a professional sense, but also in your personhood. Um, and as the educators and I here in Ecuador have discussed um, often, our processes as teachers and researchers um, requires a sort of imagining of who is the teacher researcher and it comes back to how we think about ourselves um, as both professional and personal and how these um, these identities are not so separate and less distant from each other um, than we might have previously assumed and so we've been thinking closely about how we bring ourselves into this work our curiosities um, our intimate thoughts about living and being, political orientations and tensions. Um, and I think that sometimes in education, there's this notion of professionality that distances us from bringing our whole selves into this work, as if educators are apolitical, that this work is not personal. Um, and yet we continue to, yet as we continue to pay attention to the structures in which we work, we notice how these structures also work personally in our bodies, in our minds. So then what does practice of research do to pedagogy? And this is what I find hopeful and motivating about living inquiries is that it brings educators into the thickness of living moments with others. Um, it aims to create a consciousness and an attention to respond to something that matters in our actual lives. So the questions that we're asking with children aren't for children only. They're not only um, to entertain children, but they actually matter to us. And so we're engaged in the research itself as well. And so as teachers and researchers, we're asking what it might mean to stay in the richness of a problem, not to solve it, but to think deeply and carefully with, to wonder and to consider what possibilities might emerge if we stay with the trouble of a problem, rather than quickly fixing it or following, falling into um, you know, human tendencies of immediate solution. And I think this is also really common in early childhood, uh, where educators sort of govern children or manage to reduce conflict rather than situating ourselves within the conflicts and tensions that are proposed and staying there and figuring something out alongside children. And this is an excerpt from the Rinaldi article this week um, that I think is particularly powerful uh, in thinking about the pleasure of research and how um, enjoyable it is as an educator. Um, she writes, when we say that school is not a preparation for life, but is life, this means assuming the responsibility to create a context in which words such as creativity, change, innovation, error, doubt, and uncertainty, when used on a daily basis, can truly be developed and become real. And this means creating a context in which teaching learning relationship is highly evolved where the solution to certain problems leads to the emergence of new questions and new expectations, new changes. And this also means creating a context in which children from a very young age discover that there are problems which are not easily resolved, which perhaps cannot have an answer. And for this reason, they are the most wonderful ones because herein lies the spirit of research. I think this paragraph just really um, hits home about the spirit of research and and um, what it means to really be tangled up in a question and to live inside of it. And these are some excerpts from the Material Encounters book that I think also speak to possible orientations and dispositions of a researcher, a teacher researcher. And if you like, you might um, be able to draw on some of these in your, in your uh, final paper. Um, 
So we're situating ourselves in research um, that's not necessarily on or about children. Um, the focus isn't about gaining knowledge or, um, or finding a truth, uh, but rather it's a collective search for insight and understanding um, so that we might closely align ourselves with children's experimentations, research pathways, and ways of being and knowing. Um, and so this is a, a quote from Bassini Kachibal Kind and Culture. So I'm not going to read through all of these, but I will post this PowerPoint on eLearn if you'd like to revisit some of these ideas for your final paper. So as a teacher or researcher, what kind of knowledges do you care about? What counts? Um, and if we think that our methods of thinking, again, don't reflect but rather create meaning, that what then what kinds of methods are required to create the kinds of worlds that you want to live in? Um, and so I think that um, this is central in thinking about um, conceptualizing what is the role of the teacher researcher. As educators, we're not merely delivering curriculum, we're not relaying information, we're actively creating subjects. And we're implicated in the construction of meaning and its effects and what it does. So therefore this work is not only teaching but it's also researching to actively investigate the methods and meanings that we're constructing with others and the consequences of that meaning. Um, so what, what are we throwing into the world and what might it do? And so Donna Haraway writes that it matters what matters we use to think other matters with. It matters what stories we tell to tell our stories with. It matters what knots, not knots, what thoughts think thoughts, what descriptions describe descriptions, what ties tie ties. It matters what worlds world worlds. And I see this as so methodological um, as we think about how it is that knowledge is generated through the methods that we use. So this is part two of your portfolio entry eight. And this is a, a piece where you're going to be thinking about what it means to be a re teacher researcher. Um, and this final entry, um, this section can be used as your final paper if you like. And so I encourage you to craft this in a way that you can incorporate it into your final paper um, as a way of orienting you into your writing. So reflecting on what we've explored, read, and discussed throughout the term, um, and in reviewing the BC Early Learning Framework uh, from page 17 to 18, the section on the role of the educator as a researcher and collaborator, you can create an entry that's about one to two paragraphs um, that describes the image of the teacher, or more specifically, write a passage that describes the teacher as researcher. Um, so concisely write this entry, relying on the readings, the course text, and the course content. Your discussion needs to reflect your learning in this course, so make sure to write this in an accessible and direct language, almost as if you were writing a piece for the BC Early Learning Framework. And paraphrase author's ideas whenever possible, so try not to use long direct quotes except for occasional short phrases. Um, and this entry, again, can be used in your final paper. So this last piece will be almost as if it's an excerpt that you're going to put, you would put into the BC Early Learning Framework if you were writing a passage that described who is the teacher researcher. So for your portfolio eight, you'll have part one, which is the piece of walking, and then you'll have part two, which is where you're describing your image of the teacher as researcher.